1010XL's Jaguars Roundtable is brought to you by Kingfish Pest Control, Jacksonville's trusted pest control company and proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars. The ball is picked off and intercepted. Josh Allen dropped into coverage. Jamal Agnew brought it all the way back. Touchdown, Jacksonville! The Jags have stuffed him again at the one-yard line. A high snap, but Trevor handles it. Scrambles away from trouble. Fires toward the back of the end zone. That ball is caught for the touchdown. All right, guys. Welcome in to the Jaguars 2022 State of the Jaguars 1010XL Roundtable. A very long name for a short reason to say. We're here to talk about Jacksonville Jaguars in the year of our Lord, 2022. And so here today, myself, Mia O'Brien, co-host, XL Primetime, Helmets and Heels on 1010XL, as well as director of multimedia, Frank Frangie, host of Frangie Show, as well as the play-by-play voice of your Jacksonville Jaguars. Josh Allen, fourth year, it's crazy to say, fourth year, outside linebacker for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We got Jesse J. Paw Polish, who has been a fan of the Jacksonville Jaguars for how long? Since 93. 93. Speaking of wow. 93, we got one of the original 10 right here. We got Greg the Mangler Huntington in the house. I, I'm, and I'm so glad you you had a fan because you know me. Anytime I have an opportunity to thank the fans, I do. Because without the fans, the, we'd be used to playing a game of pickup football, wouldn't we, Josh? Yeah. Right? It's the fans that make the game great. So thank you so much for coming and being here and being a fan all the way back to 93. First season was 95, so y'all were already geared up uh, to welcome us into the city, and it was a big welcome. Yeah. Now, you are origin- you're born and raised Jacksonville, Jay. Born and raised. Born and raised, but you're Duval County. Yes. We do have Clay County represented. John Shipley of Sports Illustrated, but also Clay County native, also joining us here at One Ocean today. Ha- happy to be here. Happy to always represent Clay. Yeah, because you're part. You're part of. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, Jackson. Jacksonville's my home. You know, I've, Jacksonville always my home, and you know, wherever I've went, I tell people where I'm from. It's it's Jacksonville. You know, it's nobody knows where Orange Park is. You know, <laughs> Jacksonville. Jacksonville's my place. Love it. Love it. So obviously, like Greg alluded to, we have folks from all different parties that make up what is Duval all together. What makes this county, this team, this fan base so special? And so we appreciate you guys representing. The current players, the former players, the fans, the media, everyone that makes this city and this franchise and this fan base so great. Uh, With that said, there's obviously a lot of positive vibes surrounding the team as Doug Peterson takes over as the head coach of your Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, Let's start with you, Josh. In terms of the vibes you get living in this city, Mm -hmm. obviously playing for the team, what is the feeling right now with Doug at the helm? Okay, before we get there, would you consider this a round seating? Yeah. Oh, 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 you're concerned this isn't circular enough. You know, you said table. Oh, you want round the table. table. I said round Special seating. Point. I like yeah. that. Very perceptive. Well, I already you said, I was to... like, we need the knights of the round table. Yes, like, I at like first, it. I was like, we need it circular. Right. We better make sure that food comes through. <laughs> I, like, yeah. I, like where, I like where your okay, head's at. I just wanted to put it's that out there real quick. Right. There he is. Put, put out there. But okay. what is the vibe you get living in the city right now? I mean, just as a, as a moment right now, we just we're ready to to do our part, you know. I feel like Jacks. I feel like the fans has always been supportive, you know. Even when they don't want to be supportive and they don't have nothing to support, they've always been supportive, and that's what I do say about our fans. And you know, we want to give them something to be to cheer about, to not just go to the game and just experience a football game, but also to enjoy it and to go to the competitive moments of a game and situational awareness of the game and just. You know, when it's third down, everybody's going crazy because that's the part that we need. The the, the okay, they missed the snap count because our crowd is going so crazy. You know what I'm saying? I know at one point of time it has been like that. Recent it hasn't, but I just feel like as of right now, you know, I literally go by just at this moment. They doubt what you say, they believe what you do. So we don't want to keep talking about what can we bring, how much like what we can offer for this for this community. It's time to just show it. And it's time to to lead by example. And so step one was just, you know, finding out what our culture is and what how we play and how what we're going to give 
to not only ourselves for the for the county and also for the whole organization as a whole. So uh, right now we're just focusing on just what are we, you know what I'm saying, establishing ourselves and finding ourselves as a team. And I think we're doing a really good job. I think we're on that path. We're still in training camp. So we're still obviously getting to that point. Uh, but as of right now in this moment, we have taken huge strides from previous years and I'm really excited about it. Yeah. A couple of you guys, yeah. by a couple, I mean all of you, were yeah. at the game Friday. Yeah, I, I think the vibe, to Josh's point, yeah. and, and I know you're going to get to this as we move on about the history, and, and Greg certainly knows that. I think the vibe's so good because it's been a patient fan base, Josh. Yeah. This fan base has waited, man, and they have patiently waited. And, and j Paul, you know this. Yeah. Patiently waited, and I think there is a good vibe. I think this Doug Peterson guy's a good dude. I, I think it's still about, and Josh, you, you, you play for him, but it's still about are you a regular guy? Are you still is it still the guy that if you bumped into him and he was your neighbor, you'd like to sit there at the mailbox and talk to him for a while? And I think he's that guy. Don't you get that? I think he. I think Doug Peterson's that guy. Greg ran into him. He yeah. literally did bump yeah. into him. Don't you think that's the vibe? I did, it? Absolutely. I ran. I ran into him in June at a golf tournament, and it was the night before an event, and we were, it was, there was like a red carpet. Well, my my wife and I, we ended up being behind Doug and his wife. Yeah. And so I engaged him, right? Because, I mean, former player to former player. And uh, just, I mean, very um, outgoing, but receptive yeah. and not pompous, not arrogant. And his wife was great. Um, and I, I mean, he was just, it was, it was fun to be around. Um, and you just, and to your point, I get the sense that, you know, as a fan, because I'm 22 years removed, right? I identify more with Jay Paul than I do Josh at this point in time because yeah. it was many moons ago. But I think the fans are cautiously optimistic, but coupled with a great deal of enthusiasm because of Doug. Yeah. I have not heard one person say any negative words about Doug. The reality of it is he played in the league for 14 years as a quarterback, and he backed up some of the greatest. How can that not be good for Trevor Lawrence? Won a Super Bowl, won playoff games. How can that not be good for Josh Allen and his teammates? So I think this fan base has been patient over the years. Resilience is a word I like to use. Um, but there's a there's a new level of excitement out there that I it's it's tangible and I can feel it. I mean, Josh can probably speak to this, but I, mean, I feel like with Doug, it's it's just easy to tell that he's a former player. Who's, you know, been at really every stop. You know, he's been a starting quarterback. He's been a backup. He's been a practice squad player. You know, he knows how to really and from my perspective, connect the guys. And you can tell that, you know, everything he's doing, you know, it's kind of with a purpose and, you know, there's a method to the madness, you know, behind what he's doing. So but like you said, it definitely seems like some optimism. And I think uh, really the biggest thing he's brought in is, you know, experience because uh, everything I can think of that he's done, you know, training camp, OTAs, I mean, he's done a lot of player centric stuff, but it's not to the point where, you know, it, players are doing whatever they want. You know, he, he's tough on them. And Josh, you, you probably know that as well as anybody. He's tough on you guys, but he's also a player's coach. It's different approach. You know what I mean? Do you like the former player aspect? Yeah, though? most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. I think. you got Brenson, too. You Brenson, got we have Deshae. We have our, head, our defensive coordinator, you know, <laughs> Coach Caldwell, obviously played and coached. And even on the offensive side, we have numerous coaches that played in the National League. So just that wealth of knowledge uh, for a young team like us, like ourselves, man, is just real crucial, man. And it's not even just ha about having that, that knowledge. It's about having it a way to explain it and to express it for, for us to retain us to retain it. You know what I'm saying? I think they do a good job in that. But for me, man, I'm a sponge. I want to grow. I want to learn. And so just having to pick those guys' brains, just walking down the hallway and have a conversation about, okay, when I'm thinking about doing this, I feel like I'm in my head right here, or I feel like next time I want to play against this dude, I want to do this, and just be able to just to conversate. And, uh, you know, it's been great in the locker room. It's been great in the facility. It's been great on the practice field. We respond well to adversity, uh, offense and defensively, especially special teams. And I feel like that's the growth that, that we need to make to get to where we need to be. It's just uh, when, when stuff hits the fan, to keep going, you know what I'm saying? And not keep doing going back to old past traumas. You know what I'm saying? That's the part we have to, you know, get past, yeah. get past the trauma moments. And once trauma moments happen now, how do we respond to those moments? And, and that's something that's train camp's about. I talked to Travis yesterday and he said that Doug is all about using that to move past. Yeah. You take, you acknowledge the past, right. but you use it to move forward.
I have a question for you from a fan standpoint. What do you think of Doug? <laughs> I uh, I was actually shocked at how much traffic there was on the way to the to the game yeah. Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we kind of took our time getting down there. We thought the rain was gonna be bad. I thought people weren't gonna be there because of the storm as well. And we kind of tailgated by doing some of the local places on the way because like I said, the storm will you know it won't be bad. And six o'clock, we're sitting in traffic, bumper to bumper, to go see our preseason games, and I was shocked to say the least. But I was so excited for that yeah. to see, like, okay, people are getting behind this team, people are getting behind the new coach. Um, I was a fan of Doug when he had ice cream at the Trevor and, and Doug <laughs> social. You know, I shot. I was like, wow, is ice cream that's awesome. Um, but I mean, it's it's been a long time coming. I feel yeah. like you know we've been waiting in the wings for so long and we've got the uh, momentum as a fan base behind it like ready to always be there but at times it's been difficult you know yeah. to say the least <laughs> that's the point that I'm you know I'm speaking on that like I said man I feel like our fan base has always been supportive but who wants to support really it's hot yeah in Jacksonville Florida it's super hot like it is it, it, it is hot like hot so, yeah. Like, if I was in a situation to where it was like, man, like, I love it, but it's hot. Is it worth it? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That makes you have to think yeah. in, like... Do I want heat stroke today? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, like, if we change that narrative, like, man, we're going to go out here and we're going to scream because we know we're about to watch a heck of a game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So So Josh got here in 2019. How many night games? It's just been the Thursday Two. nights. Yeah. Two. Two in the regular season. But not Two. And not home. Two, I had, uh, two I had Miami, my first one. Titans. My first one, Titans, which was crazy. Uh, my rookie year, whooped them. Good feeling. And then Miami, two years ago, which wasn't so good. And then Cincinnati away, which was like, dang it, it was a missed opportunity there. And then now this year. I don't. I think right. we're going to New York yeah. near Christmas. For near Christmas, so yeah. oh Lord. Yeah. Uh, but we kind of we, we, we want to sneak okay. one. And, you yeah. know, and Doug Pre- talks Pre- about the night games too, like oh, yeah. to us. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, like, you play a night game too. I want to play a prime time game. You know what I'm saying? Because I like, but we have to work to get to that. And as players, we're not worried about that. We worried about working. To get to where we need to be, because as a defense, man, we talk about being top five in the league, top five in the in, in the league. You know what I'm saying? That takes a lot, but we're willing to put that time in, and we've all been focusing on that moment. You know, taking a little small details. Doug's real big on details. You know what I'm saying? With small things, and the small things that young, you know, that 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 might go over our heads, and we might not think about at certain moments. But if we think about those in those certain moments, that's how we can grow. And I feel like we're doing a really good job at that thus far. How many night games do you guys have early on, 95? Um, the, the only one that I can remember, and the reason I remember it is because, you, you know, Tony had been injured in training camp. His first game back was against the Packers, which was a night game. And this had it, this hasn't happened before, and it's never happened since. But after he had a good block, the announcer in the stadium said, that was a tremendous block by number 71, Tony Vassilli. I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) hope it's a lineman don't get that. But that was a night game. Unless my memory doesn't serve me correctly. Am I right? I I think so. I'm trying to remember that. It was a long time. Yeah, it's almost 30 years. Yeah, you're right. So then 96 is when, you know, obviously the league gets put on notice with the run. Even then, though, how many night games did they give you guys? I don't, I don't remember either. Yeah, I, I don't. Well, I mean, I'll say I, I will. I will say this. Um, obviously, the game against well Denver ble- bled into the night, as well as did our game against the Patriots, the NC Championship game. But the games during the year, hard to say. We might have had one against the Saints, but we were in a dome, so what does it matter? We, were, we, were, we, were, we, were, we wound up. There were a lot of Steeler night games. Yeah, the, 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 a lot of Steeler night. That's games. true. The first win, the the game when Bill Cowher almost tackled Chris Hudson. Yep, remember that? Yeah, that was yeah. a night game. There were there were a lot of night for whatever reason. Everybody in the in that division thought the Steelers were their rival, but the Jaguars had a pretty. Jaguars played well against the Steelers. Mm-hmm. They've always the Jaguars have always put the, the, the overall record about even, isn't it? It's true. It's true. Even, true. Time. So even when the Jaguars were new. They played well against the Steelers, so the TV network saw it like to kind of pair them at night. So something like that. Yep. Yeah. But in terms of the respect, those primetime games, you guys were in a similar situation to this team now where 
you were trying to earn that respect of the league. Yeah, I mean, to Josh's point, I mean, that's, I mean, the winning changes everything, right? <laughs> it's all about the wins. The, the more you can consistently win and you have the viewership and people wanting to see you in that prime time, but you got to get there. They're just not going to give it to you if you're four and 12. Yeah, and you know, one thing that happened to me, and, and Greg remembers this, and look, I'm, I'm born and raised here, okay? Yeah. So I've been here my whole life. And we'll talk about the history later, I guess. But I can tell you, there's been, there were an expansion team in 95, but 96, they almost went to the Super Bowl. I mean, so I mean, <laughs> this is a, it was one of, in my lifetime of living in this city, I'm 63 years old, my lifetime of living here, one of the most amazing runs I ever saw, Josh, this second year team goes up to Denver and plays plays John Elway and beats the Broncos and goes and plays Jim Kelly the week before against Buffalo and knocks him out. And, and all of a sudden this team of no-name guys, all these young guys, beats the Bills in Buffalo, beats the Broncos, the really good Broncos in Denver, and almost beats the Patriots and wins this. And I'm thinking, what are we doing here? It, it must be easy. So you get an NFL game, you wait all these years, and you're two years going to so this is great. We're just, they're just going to win for us. No, no, no. It, 96 was a magical season, and it had miracle after miracle. If you remember, we didn't start well. Right, right. By midseason, we were three and six. And then we went on a run where we, I mean, won all of our games right. out for the most part. And then forget what the record was at that point in time. It may have been nine and seven, but we had to play the Falcons. We had to beat the Falcons in order to get into the playoffs. Eight and, seven and the, Fal the Falcons were like yeah. three and whatever. Right. Right. I mean, it comes down to a field goal. And who's kicking the field goal? Morton Anderson, who doesn't miss from like 38 yards and in. It's All like it's like a yeah. guarantee. Well, he misses the field goal. Miracle one, right? Yeah. We go to play Buffalo in Buffalo, who's never lost a, a, a wild card game in Buffalo. And this is the team that played in four Super Bowls. Jim Kelly, that was his last game because right. we won, right? right. But like <laughs> miracle two, right? And then we go out and play Denver, and nobody had us winning. They were making fun of our names, not pronouncing them correctly. And we win that, Miracle 3. And that's when, you know, we flew back into the city. We actually did a, a, a flyover of the stadium. I was there for that. The stadium was, half, yeah. stadium was half full. We do a flyover, you know, he tilts the wings so everybody can look down, land at the airport, they bus us to the stadium. And that's when Dave Wydell uttered his words, do you believe in miracles? And that really was the miracle season. But at the same time, it was that way for the Panthers because the Panthers went all the way to the NFC Championship game and lost. Right. So and I, I really think, you know, just I think a big part of my job is, you know, being connected to the fan base and all of the, you know, current fans, these big holders, you know, they're kids of their parents or, you know, some of the original uh, season ticket holders. And I really think, you know, the Jaguars, you know, that they come cl even close to being a team like that again. You'll see the exact same thing, you know, just people flocking to the stadium. And people saw it in 2017 after they beat Pittsburgh. And, you know, just in my experience, you know, Josh, you mentioned that Titans game. That was, I, I was my first year covering the team was your rookie year. And that was like my first ever primetime game I covered. And people were going crazy you know, before, you know, it was a Thursday night football game. And everybody else was like, oh, it's a Titans Thursday night football. But people in Jacksonville, man, it was, it was the place to be. Yeah, you know? and, and I'll give the background of this. And Josh could relate to this a little bit. But if he's playing Kentucky, Josh is a great player. But he didn't go to Alabama, Florida, LSU, Georgia. So you were always fighting for this program. Yeah. Always fight for respect. Yeah. You're always fighting for respect. Okay, so I grew up in Jacksonville, right? I go to school in University of Florida. They all did this back in the day. They always made fun of our city. Orlando had Disney. Miami had Miami. South Beach and all the Miami yeah. stuff. Man, Tampa had Tampa was growing. Yeah. People made fun of Jacksonville. What is Jacksonville? Georgia? Is it a AC town? What do you chew the back of it? What are you guys doing, Jackson? I hey, know you got Southeast yeah. Georgia family, right? We don't, we don't want to offend anybody. Yeah, but, I'm, but, I'm, but I'm growing up here, and people are always making fun. I'm telling you, that's how it was. Oh, yeah. So, so we didn't have. Well, we get a team. We thought that was the truth, man. We have a team now. Well, you can't imagine how. To your point, ship. Yeah. We had this team, and so we stuck our chest out. We're Jackson going out. Yep. So, and then all of a sudden we went out of the gate. You guys went out of the gate. That's why it was such a big deal to us. We didn't have anything. A kid grew up growing up in Jackson, but we didn't have the Dolphins and the, all the, it, all it, the stuff, it's Disney the World and all that. Yeah. Man, we had the Jaguars. They were winning, and it's still like that. It, when we win, it's freaking still like that for that reason. Yes. It's in the fabric, really, of yes, the city right yes, now. It's, I mean. So compared to our expansion team and then the next year, and then we found success early, can y'all see, like, what do you think the difference between that, like, the Jaguars and then the Browns? I know we're off it. 
because I remember Tim Couch. You know, yes, what I'm saying? Yes. Tim Couch was a part of uh, an expansion yeah. team, and he didn't. They didn't find that success. What do you think? What do you think that was? You think that was coaching? Do you think that was players? Do, what, what do you? Great question. Yeah. Why did it happen here? Yeah. It didn't happen other places. I do think coaching was a lot. Yes. Great question. I think it was a big part of it. I think he was. Didn't you feel like that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and I think Tony even alluded to it in his speech. But we all had the same um, mindset about Tom. <laughs> I don't think anybody liked Tom, <laughs> but but, every, but everybody respected him yeah. because he, he 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 laid the vision yeah. and he really drove us towards it. And if you're you know type A kind of guys that want to be successful, and you're like, okay, if that can guy we can follow his pattern, we can be successful. Then he gets grace on all the other areas where he's. A I have a question for you. Yes, sir. About all about the whole Jackson. I was going to say, we can't forget. Yeah. You were drafted yeah. by TC. Yeah. yeah. So. I liked him. I ain't had no problem with him. Yeah. I went, but I wasn't into he's talking. No, you were no, just like no, like you just said. If you're a type A, do you you consider yourself type A? Take direction type of guy. I mean, he's an Josh. You're Josh. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 Mark, but Coach Stoops is very much, he yeah. tells you guys what to do and I love you do Coach it. Stoops. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's shooting. College, you ain't got no choice. <laughs> right. <laughs> college, so that's why for you choice. coming Coach in. Coach Stoops was yeah. a Coach Stoops. Like, Coach Stoops said, I'll say Saban with two different people. You know what I'm saying? But they both have, like, Coach Stoops had success in a different way yeah. of relating to his players than Coach Saban. But Coach Saban has a crap ton of success. I feel like that was almost like that mentality. And with TC, man, it was like I, I, like I said, I never had a problem with him. I didn't never had to deal with him because I wasn't that part. I was a rookie. My job there was to just play football, know the city, go home to my wife. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was my life. Thing about Tom, like, in my life, that, you know, like you said, 2019 was, I think he was very genuine. You know, a lot, a lot of people, you know, they hear, you know, the five minute thing and they think, you know, some kind of joke. But no, we, you'd go into any building, yeah, any yeah, building yeah. in a stadium, and the clocks were set back five minutes. Yeah. Even rooms that you didn't think players would be in, they were set back five minutes. So yeah. I think he was very genuine, and you knew who you knew who you were getting. Right. Let me go back to the question after you. Yeah, yeah. And I thought about this coming over here. Let's play at Penn State. Yes. I mean, Penn State. That's Ohio State, USC, Alabama. It's Penn State. Let's play at Penn State. And you get here, here's Jacksonville, who had never had a team. Uh, fans didn't really know how to – I mean, ha, that had to be culture shock. Didn't, I mean, was it? Uh, well, I, yes and no. I mean, because there was such a, a great deal of enthusiasm with Both the fans. Oh, yeah. I mean, Penn State. I mean, we had over 110,000 right. people in our stadium. But here, you know, uh, the Gator Bowl was – Built for college bowl right, games right, and the right. Georgia Florida game or Florida Georgia, depending on where you live. So be <laughs> careful. Um, I, I think it holds what eighty something thousand. Yeah. Our first season, that stadium was there. That was packed. Yeah. So it felt. The same. It didn't matter what the sun was doing. That stadium was packed. So it was similar. It was similar. Of course, I was drafted by the Redskins. So yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. that's right. Ten Ten XL's Jaguars Roundtable is brought to you by Kingfish Pest Control, Jacksonville's trusted pest control company and proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So what I'm curious now, let's pivot this. Now, you were born in 96, right? Sure. Okay, so born in 96, <laughs> but typically you grew up in the 90s. Jay Paul, you're obviously growing up in the 90s. Yes. You're, you're here. From a fan's perspective, what was it like when the team first gets here, seeing to now where it is today? So I was three when we got the team. Mm-hmm. Um, and my family was all older than me, like, you know, I don't have any siblings or anything, my cousins and everything. So they were all into football already and they all gravitated towards the Cowboys. So they're like, okay, a new team. Let's see. And they're cautiously optimistic at first, you know, they're like, Hey, that's really cool. We can go to the games where it's all here. Like my dad was excited because he's from Cleveland. So he was without a team. at the Yeah. (laughs) Without a team at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so he was like, kind of like, Set up with the ball together, but my dad was also the same guy at Kmart buying the Birdline jersey, like when it came out <laughs> that I still have today. Um, so, but this just like pumping feeling of it getting going, and you're like getting this momentum, and everybody's wearing Jag gear, and you're excited to talk about the season, you're excited to talk about your players, you know, and just kind of get that recognition that nobody wanted to give you before, like you know, what I'm saying. Um, but then towards the end of that. Now you're getting the recognition you didn't want. 
you know, and you're still wearing the, the stuff, still trying to represent it. But I mean, um, it was exciting though time coming up and seeing a new team, but it was always, you know, well, it's a new team. It's a new team. It's a new team. It's a new team. You're young guys. It's a new team. And so you're kind of like, yeah, you're like, okay, it's the team that's old as me. I'm not a young team anymore. You know, like, I'm not, it. <laughs> I mean, like, let's, let's be real. But I mean, there's still that support at that base of it. Like, you know, we were kind of saying our generation is the one that saw the games that we didn't have a team really beforehand, you know, so we kind of came in with nothing and just were really like excited to grab onto something and go, okay, this is my home roots now. So. That's a great point. Your only team. Yeah. A lot of people my age had another team. I was a Steelers right. fan because yep. my family's from like Pennsylvania. Your only team. Your only team. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Chip, you were literally born like with, with them already here. Yeah. No, my, my, uh, my family grew up, you know, like Kansas City Chiefs fans, New York Giants fans from all over. And then once the Jaguars got here, literally every, you know, Shipley, Shipley related person, and they're like, all right, you know, that because I mean, just football family. And I, I feel like, you know, that's how a lot of fans are. You know, once football got here, you know, they're ready to call it, you know, their team. And before you were a reporter, you obviously were a kid growing up playing football in this area. What was the connection, if any, between the Jaguars and your you guys playing youth football in Clay County? I think everybody looked up to you know, the Jaguars as, you know, that's where everybody, you know, wants to be. And, you know, it's cool to see, you know, some of the people from back then who have done it, you know, Shaquille Hordman, Chris Rushery. I know you played with him at Kentucky. Uh, he, he went, he was another guy that went to Oak Leaf, grew up around here. So I, I think everybody, you know, saw the Jaguars as, okay, you know, this is an actual tangible example of, you know, you can be in Jacksonville, Florida, in Northeast Florida, and go on to play, you know, this sport at the highest level. How has your perspective I'm curious. Growing up here, also being unbiased media member, what has that evolution been like for you, especially knowing everything the team has gone through during that season? I feel, time? I feel like I understand the people of the team a lot more now than I ever did growing up. I mean, you know, people, you know, like Josh, you know, countless of his teammates and coaches, you know, I, I, I don't. I don't see them as much now as I did back then as just, you know, players and the guys going out there on Sunday. You know, I see them as, you know, people I respect. You know, they're just, you know, people. You know, they're people, on, players on the team who, you know, I'm friends with outside of football. And I, I think just recognizing that, yeah, you know, these guys are playing football, but the human element of the game too. And that's the biggest thing I picked up covering the team is how important the human element is. Like, you know, I know everybody's here for football, but at the end of the day, you know, there's also commodity, there's respect. So you talk about the I think that's important, you know what I mean? That's why, you know, obviously, you know, for us as players, like, we have to know each other. You know what I'm saying? For for for, for, for a team to be successful, you have to know who you're going to work with every day. And I feel like outside of that, also having a relationship with the news people, like, you guys are our connection. If, if I don't tweet it, I try to stay off of social media as much as I can. So my words don't don't get expressed or don't get out there as much as, you know what I'm saying, if you guys do it. So yeah. it's like having that relationship, you guys knowing us as people, you know what I'm saying? We are just people, like we're people exactly. that have a, 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 a job that we get to have fun in. It's a stressful job, but it's a fun job. And it's a job that we're willing to do every day. And then for you guys, it's that connection. It's that doing this. You know what I'm saying? We can sit here. Like, you cover us. You cover the good, the bad, the ugly, the, the great. You cover everything. You got you guys have a job to do. So for me to know Mia, UK, Jersey, you know what I'm saying? We have that connection. You know what I'm saying? Good to bad. You know what I'm saying? John, like, Jason. You know what I'm saying? And you, I feel like you've always covered, you know what I'm saying, personal stuff. So it's like, it makes it easier to, to not shy away from from all that because you know you you have, you also you also have guys that just don't want to deal with the media, but if you know those people, you know how they react. Y'all know how to do your job instead of forcing something that you know. I mean, obviously you have to get the story, and I understand right. that point. But know your personnel. Yeah, that's you know a big what I'm thing. And know your and like John said too. Know know your city. Know I think that's city. a big. I think that's a big yeah. reason why. When we sat down as, as 1010 to kind of plan out this project that we're sitting here doing right now, it was so important to have so many different groups represented because yeah. 
This is such a diverse city, and it's a city that its fans want a voice. Its former players are so active in the community. So small. It's a small yeah. community, but it's a huge community exactly. within yeah. itself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I just think it's, like, now I'm getting a little older. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm starting to see a lot of, you know, th- how things really work around this organization. Starting to see more fan base. You know, I'm starting to react and, and like understand how people think. You know what I mean? And I feel like this offseason, man, I've bonded with Tony so much. So he he kind of, he's kind of just being around him. I wanted to know when they were successful. How was that team? You know what I'm saying? Like, well, the hit, we've had history before. You know what I'm saying? I look up at the stadium, you know, you go to all these stadiums, you see all these names. I go to Jacksonville TIA Bank and I see four names. You know what I mean? And one's an owner. And one's an owner. Five names. Yeah. You know what right. I'm saying? Four players. You know what I mean? So, and my, and my I look at it, I want to be up there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I want to be one of those guys because I want to, I'm all about a legacy. I play for a legacy. Like somebody asked, what is your purpose of playing? Me, it's a legacy. So, like, I love knowing about the history. You know what I'm saying? Especially when I was at Kentucky. I think that's when it really hit home. Probably my junior year was just like, I want to leave my name forever you know what i'm saying and i feel like my senior man i've absolutely done that and i feel like coming to jacksonville from falling from i'm thinking i'm about to go somewhere else to being in jacksonville which i like shocked me that i was even put in a situation but i think it was all set up for it because going to kentucky kentucky was not a kentucky was not a don't tell don't tell stoops or coach cal that but don't, that's tell, a, don't, don't tell Coach Cal or Coach Stoops but that. That's, but that's, the, it's like, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to, you don't want to stay the same forever. Obviously, if you're great, you want to stay great forever, like Alabama, obviously. But if you're not up to that standard, you don't have the personnel, you have to work at it. And I feel like just seeing the process of Coach Stoops, you know what I'm saying? The people that he's brought in, the people he had to get rid of to get to where he is now. I feel like I was a part of that. I feel like the teams that I was there was a part of that transition. And that's the transition that I wanted to leave. So when they have, well, now you see all the things that Kentucky's having, where did it start from? You know the what I'm saying? Citrus Bowl beating his Nittany Lions. That that was, you, le- you left your name all over my Nittany Lions, unfortunately. <laughs> but, 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 but kudos to you for playing in your senior bowl game because yeah. it's a popular trend now not to do that. And I remember my, la- my last year at Penn State because it was my dream to play at Penn State. Um, I was a three-year starter. And I was starting a tackle my senior year. We were playing Stanford in the Blockbuster Bowl. I played two. I played in two out of three Blockbuster Bowls. Believe it or not. <laughs> well, they were handling us pretty good. It was like thirty-three to eleven, unfortunately. So Joe starts to run in the second team to start giving them reps for the next year. Really? And my, I see my guy come in and I go, "No," waved him off. I said, "This is the last time I'm going to wear this jersey." So. Yeah. Um, cool. I'm, I'm going to finish it out. It means something to you. So kudos yeah, to you for yeah. playing. Yeah, you did a great job in that game. And with that uh, said, talking you. about it meaning something, yeah. I think what's so funny is even if the success hasn't been there, for whatever the reason, and maybe we can blame the good place, but I don't think it's just <laughs> that NBC show, the Jags are like this cult like fiction, cult fictional icon, if you may, like in pop culture. I don't know why, but for some reason the Jaguars are something you hear about throughout the country. So – I, maybe it's maybe it's the Teal Street Hooligans, the Bold City Brigade. Like, Jay Paul, what do you think it is? Like, why is it the Jaguars that get talked about? I think because it is a newer team sometimes. Good and bad. So, huh? It's a good and bad. Yeah, right. Exactly. Good right. and bad. Because the recent right. life, it was, it's been a lot of bad and negative. But we're getting talked about. So right. now they're going to see. I just want to. Absolutely. No, I don't absolutely want you to talk right. about the good. I just don't want it's the good and bad. No, but you're absolutely right, though. And I mean, like. So it's bad, right? So on on Twitter, every every two seconds you have some kind of guy from somewhere who thinks he's somebody might be verified or not. Oh, the Jags have fans. Oh, the Jags have fans, and I'm like, we do this every day, and we bury this every day. <laughs> like, why are we doing this um, again? Yeah. So yeah, we had that situation, and it was wild when the good place did come out. And he was a Blake Bortles fan. And he, was like, he was excited Blake Bortles fan. And he it was, was weird. Like, yeah, it was so it's weird. And I'm like, weird. I was Googling it. Who is from Jacksonville in the show? Like, where? And I couldn't find, like, anything that ties so to weird. us. Yeah. And, That's why I stay off. <laughs> and, I mean, so that weird. was, you know, and I guess because we had got like, a little bit of, of a good buzz going on back then. And, that was, you know, kind of 2017-ish. We were starting to get good again. But, um. 
I don't I don't really know where it's coming from. I mean, I don't know if we're they're hearing us more now, even though we don't have fans. I don't know if they're like hearing us more now instead of just like, oh, let's just throw these guys in and just start talking about them because you would think it would be like your teams that have been here forever, like Cowboys or you know they they pick on you know, people want to pick on the little man. Yeah. You know what I mean? They want to pick on the, you know, when you're dealing with people, you're dealing with egos, and it's easy to go against the little guy. You know what I'm saying? And and when we were part, you know, when you, I, was, I swear I was just thinking about this a couple of days ago, just like, just where we're at, you know what I'm saying, nationally. And I understand, you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, I've been, I'm a part of it. I've been a part of it, and I've been a part of that, that losing culture. And it's easy to, to outside world to, I, I know what we have right. from from the outside looking in. You're on the national television, actually turn on Sports Center, and you're seeing your team talked about in a negative way. That's all people know. It's hard. That's you right. know what I'm saying? That's like that's right. all that's people. Right. People don't. People are not going to understand. Like, I well, I talked to my barber about more of us because he, he you know he he's he's in the he's in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Like he's like he's talking to people. This is what. Jacksonville, you know, has a say. And, like, for me, man, it's just crazy there because they see what they see on TV. And, 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 and they see, and that's what they see. Yeah. And that's how people is going to perceive the Jacksonville Jaguars. So that's what I'm saying. You have to win. Right. Well, that's it. You have to win. And, yeah, and I think yeah. that's the, and I think that's going to take the narrative because as soon as you start winning, now they're going to be, oh, they have Trevor Lawrence. Oh, they have Trayvon Wonder. Oh, they have Don't Be Oh, they have this. Oh, they have that. You know what I'm saying? So they're just looking for it. I think people are looking for excuses for us to, for for us to, to to win, you know what I'm saying? They want and, a butt to the jokes. Right, you know right now I mean? it's the butt to the jokes. Yeah, butt I mean, we jokes. were. I went to the draft in, in Vegas this year. I was there, and uh, you know, I <laughs> I got into so many arguments with people, and I'm not a confrontational person. Like I'm not, but sometimes when you put a certain somebody in football, like you know, places, other people will come at you and be like, "Oh, you don't know what you're talking about." You don't yeah, know what you're about. <laughs> you know, but also because you yeah. love your team. Right, and yeah. so we're waiting in line. One of the biggest moments, me and my mom are the ones that go up all her football stuff. She's versus the holders. So we're waiting in line for the Super Bowl rings to like walk around the thing and look at all the Super Bowl rings. And this Patriots fan walks by. Uh-oh. And he's like, oh, is this the line of guys that are never going to see a Super Bowl ring in their life? They had that the cheap good. to get there, yeah. one of them. Yeah. And so I was like, We had them be, they know we were cheating and stuff. Like oh, I'm not hearing none of that. Oh, hey, God, hey, God. He kept fucking up. I'm yelling at him as he's going. And there's a Steelers fan behind me, and he's actually got my back, which was amazing. <laughs> I know I do we were going to like team up like that. And so I was like, Oh, and he's like, All the way around the corner, I'm like, Oh, yeah. And Miles Jack wasn't down. And the whole <laughs> line erupts. And I'm like, and now I'm gonna look at the ring. Said my piece. <laughs> right. But here's, Said my piece. Here's the thing too, is like, and maybe John, like you can speak to this having covered the team and looking at things from a national perspective in the media. Like, do you have like I know for us growing up in New Jersey, like the Giants and Jets obviously have a ton of fans, right? But there was no Bold City Brigade. No. Like there's no Teal Street Hooligans, like there's no like passionate like subset, like no. this is our fan group. Like, I think that is so unique to Jacksonville. I think a lot of it is because it's a smaller city and it's accessible. So Yeah, no, absolutely. I I think, you know, just looking at the Jaguars as a person inside the city versus looking at them nationally, like you said, it's it's completely different. You know, I mean, so many people from the outside. I mean, I've discovered this a lot and really in the last two years that, you know, unless you're there every day and you're actually seeing what things are happening, most people don't know what they're talking about, you know, when when it comes to the team. You know, you're seeing... Headlines being grabbed and everything, but I really think Jacksonville's one of those. When they have him listed as a defensive tackle, yeah, exactly. to an outside yeah. linebacker. Exactly. And like, and I'll well, tell you, Josh hit on something. He changed all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. and, I, and, I, and I will tell you this, and I know you're going to you how you flip the script. And I wanna, but let me say this I've been every training camp here, okay? I've been every one of them. I've been, I've been training camp 27, 28, whatever the heck this is. And for me, and I'm an optimistic guy, you might disagree, man. There's some dudes out there now. I mean, I mean, you said I disagree with you. Know you? I'm saying, I mean, I hope you agree with me. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you agree? You have some dudes. I was like, yeah. uh, uh, I don't I'm, think we have some guys. I'm just telling you, just just to the eye test. Yeah. yeah. Some dudes out there. Now. That matters. Yes. Yes. That's how the, you the, win. The, the eye test. Yes. Like that is a real thing. Yeah. Like I learned about that when I was in college. Absolutely. Like, a real thing. When 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 uh, Kentucky, my head coach called me. 
like, hey, Kentucky's coming here. Da 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 da. Something I test. And like when he said that, I was like, what the heck did that mean? And so when I he pulled me out of class, and so I'm walking down the hall, and he's just like staring at the hall, like, just like looking me up and down. And then obviously, can this dude, does this dude look like he can play in college football? And at the time, I did. So he was like, you passed the eye test. We have an opportunity for you. Let's go make it work. And I feel like it's just like that in the football league. You know, so you don't want the big roly, you know, size, but you want guys that look good at that position. Look the part. You look yeah. the part. You know what I'm saying? You have two outside linebackers that are above 6'5", above 260, that can run and like, that looks like people to mess with. I think just from that, that can intimidate people. Trent Williams is a freaking massive big man that can move crazy. Just from just from looking at him, he can intimidate people. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that gives him an advantage. You know what I'm saying? If you have safeties that look don't look like they're supposed to be playing safety, but can play safety, that that means something. Then you look at Tom Brady and you're like, this dude ain't gonna be worth a lick, and he'll <laughs> six six touchdowns, <laughs> five hundred yards. You know, so that eye test is like. Yeah. So crucial, but also about Jacksonville, man. Yeah, which which is which I find so interesting is, you know, I traveled a lot this offseason. I traveled to you know places to where there's teams in these cities. There's a lot to do in those cities. A lot to do. I went to Arizona. There's a lot to do. There's money. There's people. There's resources. Dallas. There's resources. There's Jacksonville. We don't have that many resources. So like the resources, the resources that we do have, we get they get utilized, and that brings people in because not only just athletes are using it, you have regular people using those same resources. And when you have like that, I mean, obviously for me, man, I, I have kids, so like I'm really not trying to leave as much as I can, you know, as much as I want to. So, like, with Jason. Like, Jason not only trains professional athletes, but he also trains. I work out with high school students sometimes, but I get to talk to them. You know what I'm saying? I work out with regular people. I get to talk to them. Some of those kids here. And, like, there, man. And it's, and, and, but, right. but then you go to Dallas, and, the like, when Andre was, like, when Cisco was out there with Mike Parsons and them, it's a professional, you know like, Isolated, just NFL athletes, and that's together. why I love that Jason started. Like when, like when we started with Jason, man, he started out a little bitty, you know, hole in wall, shit, like you know, spot, and he's grown to where he is now because the resources, the resources, like the resources are changing, and you have to learn to adapt. And I feel like once we start winning, and once the city starts to invest that money until the Jags walk, because we're, we're the people gonna start coming here. We need to expand on on ways and things that bring people in this city. And I, but like I said, I think it starts now. I think it is going to start now. And I feel like it's going to may take a minute, but I think Shad has a vision for that, and know. he's going to do his little thing, which I'm you know I'm for it. Yeah. But I think as a team, man, I think resources is 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 big in a city, and I feel like you know you start getting to that point. More better resources are going to come out, and that's going to bring a lot more people. Yeah. And I feel like that also is going to benefit for the fans and the team success as well. From my perspective, I mean, Frank, you mentioned it how you know it just seems like it's noticeable. You know, the eye test they have some guys this year. I mean, this is my Fort Jacks team I'm covering, and I mean, just the, this year, I, I think I, I noticed it the first probably day or day, second day of training camp, like just the sheer number of you know talented guys, the depth you guys have in certain positions. And it's crazy because like I just keep thinking about it. Like, you have guys from those teams, but then we also bring in new guys from teams that have won. Yeah. So it's not only like, you know, and when they come in, they're Jacksonville Jaguars. No matter where you came from, you're Jacksonville Jaguars. So you're a part of, unfortunately, you're a part of what happened, but you're a part of what you can't, like, like why we bring you here? You you have experience. You bring that wealth of knowledge. You bring that experience that you put on this team, and we can all grow from that. You know what I'm saying? You attack each day like a professional. You attack each day like you what you've already been doing to get to this point to get a big paycheck, a big check, and you do that every day. That's bring that's that's bringing more talent to the team. That's bringing more experience to the team. You know what I'm saying? So not only do we have guys like that coming in this year, we have guys from previous years that's looking at that like this is how you prepare, this is how you work, this is how you come to work every day and compete 
gonna get better because heck me, everybody that came in is new. I want to know like Foyer, Foyer, Foyer led the league in tackles. You had to be, you had to study the game to to lead the league in anything. You know what I'm saying? You had to be a smart player. So for him, Atlanta wasn't you know as good as as the top teams, but individually, he held his own, and he's bringing that to the Jacksonville Jaguars. How do you prepare? How do you look at the game? And just being around on the field with that dude, you can tell why. I can hear. I can tell why. Yeah. So now we're now now we're having a play caller that's that's flying around to the ball, making plays, getting everybody lined up to where they need to be, and also making plays. You know that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So on each line we have that. We brought a guy in each line that 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 signifies that like Foyer. I mean not for uh, Foley. He went to the Jets. Again, it's another player that had a lot of success at that team. You know what I'm saying? But the team wasn't as good. You bring that over here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's work. You show us how you prepare. You show us how you work. Let me know what type of player you are. And let's let's grow on that. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that's almost, as we're wrapping up here, because I know we do have a time limit, uh, like that's almost like, I feel like that's a mantra. Uh, like that's like kind of the epitome of Jacksonville. Of you're gonna say that I can't work. You're gonna say I'm part of a you know a group that isn't mm-hmm. successful. Watch me work. And so that's gonna be the final question. We'll go around and we'll we'll kind of each share what you believe makes Jacksonville as a city, as a fan base. What makes this franchise in this city special and unique from the other 31? And what is next for this group? So. Greg, would you like to start? Uh, you know, I think we've said it a number of times uh, throughout the, the show, and that is, you know, Jacksonville, although a big city and maybe in population, but a small town feel. Um, and people, there's real connectivity with the people that live here. And you see that in the, the fan base. You, you go to a bigger city, you, 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 you kind of lose that. People have other things they could do. Um, it, and I don't say that in a negative way to Jacksonville, but you know, this is you know, Frank, to your point, this is this is it. I mean, you got a professional football team. Can you imagine if this team up and left, God forbid? I mean, it would it would lose some of its definition. And I think the people that are here, the fans, they get that. And the last thing they want to see is them turning them back on the team and just compounding something like that. They're gonna support them and be cautiously optimistic. I drink the Kool-Aid every year. I really do. Um so what I see going forward, um, I haven't watched any training camp, but I watched the Browns game. And what I saw on defense was very impressive. The D-line was extremely stout. They played bully ball. They didn't get blown off the ball. Josh and Trayvon, they complimented each other, uh, got rushes and uh, pressures, um, linebackers flying around. And then, you know, watching the offense. Offensive line did, did a decent job. Um, Etienne was good. Our receivers caught balls. And I'm like, Wow. I haven't seen that in a while. There's something there. So the future's bright from yeah, my perspective. And I think that's the key. We know what our city is. We talked a great deal about this whole time about it. The team's got to win. I like, I like, I like, Greg. I like what I saw. I, again, now you got Josh Ham Trayvon. Yep. Okay. Now you got Foley Fonacasi. Looks like a big, visible guy to me now. Yes. He's a big, and, and Roy, Roy looks good. He's, we're wrong yeah. he looks good. He looks <laughs> cut, doesn't he? He looks good in Devon. I mean, all of a sudden, now you have a great point about Lulacon, too. To lead the league in tackles, Josh made a great point. To lead the league in tackles, you got to study, you got to prepare, you got to show up every day. You can't take the Saints game off and play well against the Panthers. You got to play every game mm-hmm. to lead the league in tackles. I like what I've seen. I like the back end. I worry about depth, to be honest with you. I don't think it's a deep team. I, you know, I don't know who's deep anymore. I mean, it's hard to be, it's hard to have 53 great players. I get that. Yeah, you right. But, <laughs> but I'll tell you, the first 22, Plus the plus the nickel plus the, the third and fourth receivers, I think I think you guys are pretty good. I mean, I, I'm honestly, I believe, yeah. so. I think the next step is having a pretty good year, and I'm, I'm not saying this stuff's in here. We got, I, I really think. That. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think just you know what makes Jacksonville special is you know, leaving the stadium. I think after a win, you can feel 
the energy and kind of pride in the city. And, you know, this isn't to say anything negative about any other team, but I'm not sure, you know, people play, say, in Denver or Los Angeles, you know, the energy is the same there when the team's successful. Or, you know, people, players are able to pride themselves as much as, you know, okay, I'm a Denver Bronco, et cetera. Whereas Josh, you know, I've heard you say before how proud you are, you know, to be a Jaguar, you know, the team that drafted you, the team that embraced you. So I just think having that pride is something that's special in Jacksonville. And I mean, just, you know, from what I've seen, I've, uh, you know, been at each camp practice. I mean, the Cleveland Browns game, I'm, I'm happy they played Cleveland because last year their first preseason game was against Cleveland as well. And, you know, it was a similar situation. They played a lot of starters last year. Cleveland was about half and half, some starters, some backups. And last year, you know, the, the, the offense struggled to move the ball. Case Keenum got, I think, through like two or three incompletions. Whereas this year, completely different look. You know, I mean, defense got them off the field three times in a row. Offense went up and down the field. So I, I do think that you're going to see a really improved team this year. Jay Paul, what are you Come saying? On, because here's the thing. I said to Josh, we put a pin in talking about the city itself. Yes. Where do you see, not just on the field, but this fan base, this this city, what's next? Well, I mean, you get, you know, alumni players who keep moving back to Jacksonville and putting their money and their time back into the city. And, you know, not just not just him, but we have so many players that you can just walk around at a normal Friday night situation and you're seeing, seeing players and talking positively about the city and putting that back out there into the city. Um, so, I mean, we've seen it where – the city has grown. I mean, like with after the 2017 run, businesses started looking at Jacksonville to put their money back into the city to go ahead and start, you know, like Amazon. How many Amazon centers do we have here now that are like, hey, you know what? Perfect land. It's cheap. There's still a, you know, a hustle and bustle in city. There's money there. So let's let's go ahead and move in. So you see people looking at the city more and more. And as we win the games that we're talking about, we're going to continue to see that. You know, we have an owner who is investing and not just the team, but downtown overall, because he knows in order to keep that team successful and to keep that fan base going, I have to feed it, not just those eight games a season, right? I have to feed it the entire year. There has to be stuff going on down there all the time. That way, you know, if we do have opposing fans that come in, now I don't like the opposing fans coming in, but I get it. <laughs> it's money, you know, and they come in, they help pay for certain things, you know, they're coming in and like, man, Jacksonville's nice. We want a vacation here all the time when there's not. So there's just that constant cycle of life that sometimes if you're not a football fan, they think we have like that, you know, rose colored glasses on. We don't see anything else, but I actually wrote a paper in college about why it would be bad for the economy if the Jaguars left. And I mean, it, without, without the team here, what do we really have? There's a lot of stuff going on and everything, but I think a lot of that stems from us having a team and getting that build up. So, I mean, as a team continues to progress, we continue to build stuff downtown. It, if you build it, they will come type of situation. I didn't know anything about Jacksonville, but I came out and I love it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would love to raise my kids here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love the beach. I love Ponte Vedra. Like, I love, I love the 30 minute drives. I don't know why, but I'm, I'm I'm a 30 minute drive type of guy. You know what I'm saying? Like it's good to get my mind right by myself. I can I can go a back way for one and and go slower. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's just me. So I, I think Jacksonville is perfect. I love Jacksonville. You know, it's a hot one today, but I love it. Yeah, I love it. I think that's a good place for us to finish. So we thank you all for joining us for the. 1010 XL 2022 round table. We appreciate all of you guys and we look forward to the 2022 season. Right. Right. 1010 XL's Jaguars round table is brought to you by Kingfish Pest Control, Jacksonville's trusted pest control company and proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars.